everyone and welcome to my studio! And this video I want to start with a kind of bad news that probably everyone knows here already in the doll community. But the fact is that Mattel stops making, producing, selling Monster High dolls. A while ago they stopped with Ever After High and now it's the turn of our dear loved Monster High dolls. Of course, I don't really think it's a moment to panic, because if one, if something disappears, then something else appears and takes its place. And I really think that in some near future, Mattel will launch some new dolls, new maybe series, and we will have maybe new unbelievable dolls that everybody will adore and repaint like hell here. But the fact is that right now we better think about some other options. So I ordered online a whole bunch of dolls that I have here with me that I can repaint instead of Monster High dolls just to see how it all works and if it's interesting to work with them and stuff. So and the first one is such a Barbie made to move doll. I think, yeah, she's very bendable, so I think it will work very good. She's actually has the same joint system like the 17-inch Monster High doll, and they're super poseable, so I'm really positive about this one. Another one is completely new for me. It's such a ginger doll from the Project MC Square, MC2, I don't know how to pronounce it right, how to read it right even. And I think this doll is really interesting because, yeah, she looks also very bendable and she also has inserted glass eyes so you remember i already experimented once here on my channel with making my own inserted resin eyes and it was really fun and i really loved the results so i really can't wait to try to make something out of this one but today let's start with a small one let's let these big dolls for a little bit later and let's start with the smallest doll of the family and this is such an enchantment bunny doll I don't know she was just so cute I looked at her and thought oh yeah, I want to make this bunny doll she looks so cute with her ears and with her bunny and with all these I don't know with all these animalistic features and I've never really made animalistic repaints on my channel so let's give this little cute thing a new life so the big girls are waiting the tiny one is going straight to my studio and let's start working I'm opening the box and here are our friends. Her legs and arms are not bendable, but I think there is also a version of this doll with joints, if I'm not mistaken. And the bunny is losing his hair already now. I really hope I can remove her ears, because it would be much easier for me to work on her. But I think I will need to make this plastic soft first with a hair dryer, and then I will be able to pull the ears off. But let's wait with this for a while, and first I want to take the clothes off. Her shoes are very cute, and I really love the shape of her feet. To remove her tail, I will probably need some tweezers or another tool, and the decoration on her neck luckily goes easily off. She has lots of hair, and I really love the color because it fits the bunny style, so I will keep it and I will style her hair later in the end of the makeover. I use hot air of my hair dryer to make the head soft, to be able to remove the ears and the head. And by the way, her head goes easily off and you don't really need hot air or hot water to take it off. And I worked really longer to pull the ears out. I used pure acetone to remove the factory paint from her face and then I was going to use an acetone free nail polish remover for her body like I always do it. But strangely enough this paint just didn't want to go off. Her body has a sort of a painted top or just some swimsuit on and she didn't even deserve a real clothes from Mattel, poor little thing. And now it's also so difficult to get rid of it. So in the end I just took my nail buffers and I started to sand the paint off. 
I finally removed the tail using the knife and it just didn't want to come off. There is some sort of a bumper around her waist and I don't really know exactly why it was needed to make it, but I'm going to get rid of it now. And then I have another reasonable question. Why is her tail so high placed? It's literally on the middle of her back. It must be much lower. You know what? Let's solve this ridiculous situation. First I will make a new hole with my Dremel tool. The tail looks much better on the new place, I think. And the old hole I will fill in with an air dry clay. And while the clay is drying, I can finally start working on a new face of this doll. And first of all, I'm sketching her eyes and eyebrows. I'm going to create a childish face, so the eyes are gonna be huge this time. And of course, before drawing on this face, I've sprayed it with three layers of Mr. Super Clear Sealant. For the eyebrows I use my favorite technique like always. First I draw a lot of eyebrows with soft pastels and then I clean them up with an eraser. The next step is contouring and my goal today is to make her face a little bit less pink, but at the same time to keep her original pinkish undertone of the skin. There will be not much contouring today of course, since we are going for a girlish and childish look, and for blushing her face I use like always Rembrandt and Faber Castell soft pastels. And while I'm working I can answer your questions that I've picked up from the comments under my last video. And thank you so much, by the way, for all the bloggers' recommendations you left under my Nikki Tutorials repaint last week. I've discovered lots of cool YouTubers I didn't know before, so it was really useful, thank you guys! Ok, and here is the first question. Do you work on multiple dolls at a time, or focus your attention on one? I always work on multiple dolls at least two or three at the time, and normally I work on four dolls on different stages at the same time. Like one is just prepared and being sealed and slightly blushed, another one is for example on late makeup stages, uh, the third one is getting her outfit, the fourth one is waiting for her accessories, and sometimes there is even the fifth doll drying after some body modifications with their dry clay, so... Like this I can go a little bit forward and post videos every Friday even when I'm on holidays or somewhere else visiting my parents. And now let's move to the next question. Do you ever make duplicates of the same doll for people who want the same doll but you sold it already? 
No guys, all my dolls are one of a kind and I think it's honest because every person who buy the first original doll can expect that his doll is unique and the only one in the world. So I'm not making and not planning at the moment to make duplicates of the same dolls. Meanwhile I'm done with face blushing and now I'm taking my watercolor pencils and I start drawing her eyes and eyebrows. And the next question is about Bratz dolls. I was wondering if you'd ever consider repainting a Bratz doll. Maybe make a doll more natural. Honestly, I'm scared of Bratz dolls. They look just terrifying for me, and I just don't know what to do, how to, how to make it look better, how to help it. Even if I shrink a doll's head in acetone, there still will stay this weird body, these legs, this waistline. I don't know, I looked hundreds of times on Brad's dolls, but I just feel helpless in this case, sorry guys. And let's take the last question for today. Do you know of anywhere to get really small brushes like yours for really cheap? And I'm exactly the right person to ask about it, because my brushes cost just one dollar for the set of three of them. I buy them on AliExpress. These are the brushes for nail design, to draw, you know, tiny pictures on nails, but they work just amazingly on dolls as well. And I've ordered already probably three or four sets of them, and I'm using them just all the time. It's quite difficult to get immediately a really good coverage, so I spray the previous layer with Mr. Super Clear sealant and then I repeat the previous step and you can see that it works quite good, the white color is already bright enough. Then I work a little bit more detailed on her nose. smiling, so I'm kind of showing it a little bit better by making the shadows darker. Then I add grey shadows to the white of her eyes to show the round eye shape.
And then with the white pencil I block the smile. Then with a grey pencil I add shadows to her teeth. With a black pencil I draw the bottom eyelashes and then I also add a liner. I think some freckles will really fit her happy and childish look. So I mix acrylic paint, add some water and then I spray freckles to her face. And when the paint is dry, I apply still an extra touch of blush to her cheeks. It will help me kinda to build in the freckles into her skin. Now I need just to add highlights to her eyes with white acrylic paint. And the face of this doll is kinda ready. And how's her body doing by the way? The clay is already dry and now I can sand it with sanding paper and then with nail buffers. Then I spray it with three layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant and then I blush it with the same color pastels like we did for her face. But first I'm coloring the white clay spot with pink soft pastels to match the whole body. And in the end I also want to add some freckles to her body as well, the same like on her face. The next step is giving her bunny ears some extra life and dimensions. And here I'm using exactly the same technique, Mr. Super Clear sealant and watercolor pencils. And now it's the bunny's time! In one hand, honestly, I absolutely hate when they give human eyes to animals. 
But on another hand, I have absolutely no idea how to transform this body to make it look good and cute and better than it is now. You know, maybe there is something really wrong with me. But I really think that this bunny without face looks like some Pokemon. And what if we really try to make a Pokemon out of it? Oh my god, it's gonna be so much fun! Finally, I see the whole picture. A girl with a Pokemon. I just need to make a tail for him and first I need to make some sort of a skeleton of the tail using a piece of wire. I make the sharp tweezers hot to melt the back of the toy and to install the wire inside of it. And I also use the hot glue to fix it inside there. Then with air dry clay, I need to sculpt a Pikachu tail. When the clay is dry, I sand the tail to make it look smooth and then I cover the Pokemon with a layer of white primer. And then I paint it yellow and add a face and some special features. Now let's put the head and the body back together and then I've styled her hair off camera because for this I need to hold the doll between my knees and it's really difficult to film this process. And then I put the ears back into her head. Then I'm attaching the false lashes and after this I add glossy acrylic varnish to her eyes and lips. Thank you. 
And now I think I still want to trim these lashes a little bit because this face is really tiny. And by the way, the mode of this face really reminds me of the Ever After High dolls, just in a smaller form. I'll just look at it better. It really looks like Ever After High, some Apple White doll, for example. More round face, a little bit flat. And the very last step of this repaint is making a tiny outfit for her. And this is probably one of the tiniest outfits I've ever made in my doll career. And I also customized her original shoes a little bit. And here are our friends, the girl with the Pokemon. You know, I've started this makeover just like some sort of an experiment to try something new, something fun and now I can say that it's one of my best repaints ever or at least one of the most fun ones and I will for sure continue working on the Enchantimals because there are still lots of animals to turn into Pokemons in their family so I really, really, really hope you enjoy the makeover today and please tell me what do you think about my experiments with dolls and brands and what will be the next doll made by Mattel? What are your ideas or maybe someone has already even insider's information? So, and this was my video of the week. Please support it with your likes if it was fun to watch or if you just like the cute end result. Please make sure you're subscribed to my channel, otherwise you might miss my new doll repaints every week Friday. And I will see you already very soon in my new doll repaint video. Bye!